The way typically cancer develops is there are several different things that can initiate cancer, okay? Um, nutrition, physical inactivity, environmental exposures, and then also like gene mutations. So when we think about the fundamental part of the cell, within every cell, we have our DNA, okay? That makes us uniquely who we are. Within our DNA, what can happen is we may have something called mutations. Mutations, which are essentially changes or alterations in the DNA sequencing, can actually do several different things. It may be a positive benefit, that, gen that mutation in the DNA. Think of like natural selection, right? These are really good things that happen. It may have a neutral effect or it can have a negative outcome, which is more related to cancer and other chronic diseases. In terms of animal proteins have the ratio of amino acids in the right proportion, it, a higher percentage of it is absorbed in our body. Therefore, animal proteins could generate faster rate of growth better than plant proteins. But the point is, later in, years, in subsequent years, it turned out that uh, why would we want to retain more, more amino acids? Because they grow cells faster? Yeah, okay, it might worthwhile during growth, although not the best. It grows cancer cells faster too. The cellular response to animal fat and animal protein is everything that cancer requires. And on the flip side, it's not just like, oh, what do I eat then? I guess plants. No, the plants you're eating are so powerfully packed with these phytochemicals, plant-based chemicals. These are chemicals, but they're nutrients and they are coursing through your veins, saturating your cells, bathing each cell like a, a little bathtub of nutrients that depending on what you chose to chew and swallow, is either screaming out pro-cancer or anti-cancer. The way that nutrition can play a role, whether positively or negatively, um, is that, for example, just like we were talking about before, heme iron, it's a pro-oxidant. It can damage the DNA of that cell. Okay, that's one way that it can do it. Um, when we talk about um, dairy more specifically, it actually can increase hormones. Um, and those hormones can really play, it can play a role in DNA damage, but also at the same time, we have cancer cells that are fueled by estrogen and so forth. So the research on cancer that is not done because everybody wants to believe they have to have that chemo, they have to have this, they, they can't go against what the doctor says. It's sort of understandable. They're very vulnerable at the time they're diagnosed. Mm -hmm. So they do what the doctor says to do. Mm -hmm. And so we need more of good professional research. Time to wake up. We're contributing unwittingly to our own cancers, to our own heart disease, stroke, Alzheimer's, obesity, diabetes, depression, acne, all of it. We could turn on cancer growth by feeding animal protein. We could turn it off by switching into plant protein or decreasing the consumption of animal protein. That whole concept of turning cancer on and off by nutritional means, mm. that's a big deal. Mm. That was a big deal. Mm -hmm. When it comes to protection, the biggest protection that comes from nutrition is truly found in plant-based foods. And I always tell people, especially my clients, like I don't have to teach you that fruits and vegetables are good for us, but what I do believe that is my job to help teach is why they're good for us and why they're good for us is for several different reasons but one of the biggest things is that they contain something called phytochemicals or phytonutrients these phytochemicals can help prevent the things that we eat drink and breathe that become carcinogenic such as um, smoking right not that someone who's a smoker if they eat a plant-based diet is completely eliminated risk of having uh, genetic damage if they eat a bunch of plant-based foods it can help reduce that risk 